Howdy folks, uh, we are introducing India today, um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of context about the country and then talk a little bit about Britain's imperializing India. So your goal for the screencast is when you're done you need to be able to explain why Britain imperialized India and the impact that British rule had on India. If you can do both of those things, great. If not, um, you should head back and rewatch parts of the screencast. So what you should know about India today, um, it's, it's a big country in terms of area, but also it's a huge country in terms of population. Um, over a billion people live in India, and it's almost four times the population of the United States. It's the biggest democracy in the world. Um, the majority of the country is Hindu. There's a small Muslim population, as well as um, the other 6% are a mixture of Christian and Jain and several other religious groups. So here's a map of India. You can see um, from all those dots on the edges that a whole bunch of the Indian population is concentrated um, near the coastal areas, which makes sense if you look at this physical map of India. There's some kind of mountainous areas in the central, and particularly in the northern parts of India. So the British took an interest in India um, about around 1600, and the British East India Company, which was a, a British company that was a, a trading company set up trading posts in the big cities to export goods from India to Britain. Um, the ruling group, uh, a group called the Mughals, kept the British under control. Um, but slowly, over time, the British took more and more of more and more control of India through the British East India Company. Uh, in the 1700s, the Mughal dynasty was starting to collapse. They were getting weaker and the, there were increasing areas of India that were under control of the British East India Company. Um, after the Battle of Plassey, which is in the middle of the 1700s, um, Robert Clive, the leader of that army, and the British East India Company finally defeated the Mughals and took wider control of India um, from, the, from the Mughals. Officially, the British government controlled the British East India Company, but uh, in real terms, the, the company the British East India Company ruled India for about 50 years with very little outside interference from the British government. So you have really a company imperializing a country and establishing laws and rules for how they were going to run that country. There were an army of British officers there. Um, the British officers held the higher positions in the army. Uh, the Indian troops who were under their command were called sepoys, um, and they were used to keep control of the Indian population. So you've got a, an imperializing army with the superior officers being British, and then Indian troops being used to keep other Indians kind of under control. Just a couple pictures of the sepoy army men. Now, why did the British want India? Um, they were in need of raw materials, particularly Indian cotton, to fuel the the huge manufacturing boom that was going on through the Industrial Revolution. Also, with all of the finished goods that were being created by the Industrial Revolution, the British wanted a place to be able to sell all of their finished goods, and India offered both the raw materials to import into England and then a place to export these finished goods. Indian had a huge population at this time, given the population of the world, so it was obviously a an enviable market for those British goods. India became even more valuable as well after the British were able to finish the railroad lines that ran from various parts of India to the coastal port towns so that goods could be more easily imported and exported to and from India from um, England. And then for these reasons, the raw materials in the market and then the additional railroad lines India was considered the crown jewel of British colonies. As you remember from the conclusion of the scramble for Africa, the British had a huge, huge, huge imperial empire and that stretched around the world, and, and India was the most valuable of their colonies. Indian industry in this time period, because of the rule of the British East India Company, was allowed to export raw materials, but they had to purchase finished goods from England. So again, we talked about this during the Industrial Revolution unit, but if you're, if you're selling raw materials for a low price and then buying finished goods for a higher price, the net flow of money is going to be out of your country. And this really stunted the Indian textile business. They almost went out of business. Um, it was very hard for them to make money because they weren't really allowed to, to spin their own cloth and to make finished goods in India. Slowly, Britain took the British East India, or excuse me, slowly Britain took more and more control over India. Uh, the British East India Company was no longer allowed to be in charge of the country. We'll talk about why that was uh, in a couple days. 
British rule impacted India in a bunch of different ways, um, and we're going to look at some of those ways right now. Socially, the British did several things. They improved medical care in India. They, however, they did make Indian second-class citizens in their own country. The British in India uh, received far more rights, similar to the, Indi the British army officers who received all the superior positions, and then the sepoys who um, occupied the lower army positions within the, the army that controlled India. The British helped to create a middle class in India, uh, kind of a, a group between the, the poorest of the poor and the really rich. But they paid lower wages to Indian workers because the top jobs were reserved for the British. Economically, the British created irrigation systems and larger farms. They encouraged the production of cash crops that they would be able to sell and that the British wanted to be able to import into England. They increased trade, but the British East India Company dominated trade in and out of India, so the money that was made off of this trade was made by the British, not by the Indians. And they removed tons of raw materials from India and imported them into Britain. And they built some railroads and dams, bridges and canals to help kind of ease the, the movement of goods around India. Culturally, the British provided Western education to some, a small group of Indians. They introduced England as a national language, and they suppressed Indian literature and art, so they really kind of forced their culture onto the Indian people. Finally, they tried to convert Indians to Christianity, which to a majority Hindu and Muslim country did not sit well with the, the Indian people, and we'll again talk more about that a little bit later. And with that forcing of Christianity onto Indians, they clearly were not sensitive to the, the religious beliefs of this uh, Hindu and Muslim country. Politically, the British used the sepoys as soldiers. They outlawed banditry, sati, which we'll talk about at the end of the unit, as well as slavery. They introduced democratic government to India. Uh, however, they also did encourage division between the Hindus and Muslims who had previously been able to get along well in the absence of British rule. So in kind of conclusion for this screencast, what I'd like you to do is draw this continuum on your notes and put an X where you feel about the statement that's written above. If you strongly agree that the British rule was good for India, uh, put an X over on the right side and explain why. If you disagree, please put an X on the left side and explain why. If you're kind of in the middle, explain why you see some benefits and some negatives. So what are we going to talk about next? We're going to look particularly at India and try to figure out how imperialism is best responded to from a foreign power, what the Indian people should do in order to push back against British rule. There are three options for the Indian people. You could use violence, you could just kind of accept British rule and do the best that you can, or you could use nonviolence and try to fight back against the Indian government using nonviolent means. We'll look at all three of these, and you guys are going to be trying to figure out which one you believe to be the best one. So the goal for the screencast was to, for you to figure out why the British imperialized India, and then figure out the impact that British rule had on India. If you can do that, great. If you can't, go back and watch rewatch parts of the screencast. Um, as usual, uh, I'd like to see your notes when you're done with it, and also make sure that that paragraph with that continuum and the X on it with your feelings on the British rule of India is done as well. Thanks.